I am so, so, so excited to welcome you all to the first episode of Only Feelings Are Real, a conversation by Kai Collective centered around the human experience and human relationships. Our first guest could not be any more perfect for this. I am so thrilled that you guys joined us today. We have the most gorgeous couple. Facts. Tony Facts. and Tyro. Facts. I mean, we are still recovering from your Christmas photo shoot. Facts. <laughs> I screamed when I saw that picture. She said, she said, for me, come see this, come see this. <laughs> <laughs> They're both incredible human beings in their own right and just so happy to have them here. We also have my boyfriend, Falabi. This is really not his type of thing. So thank you for indulging me. You're I welcome. love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> if you could all please introduce yourselves. Let's start with Taiwo. I am Taiwo. I'm a content creator. Uh, mostly make comedy content uh, for the last three years. Um, on, the, on the day to day, I, I, work, I still work in corporate, specifically in biotech. Um, and I try and make a uh, perfect balance between making content and um, working my nine to five. But outside of that, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have run into my beautiful dear. <laughs> <laughs> and during the process of me making content and um, I'm glad to be here today. That's a nice intro, right? Oh, you, do, you can do better than that. <laughs> Mine's very you boring. Can do better than that. I'm Tony Tone. I'm a content creator and best-selling author that mm, speaks mm, of... Mm, mm, best-selling author, let's go! <laughs> so yeah, nice and straightforward. Okay. Lovely. I'm Fisaya Longe. I'm the founder of Kai Collective, a clothing brand intentionally crafted to make women feel their most confident. Uh, my name is Folabi, or Afolabi Mosro, uh, photographer, producer, I also have a nine to five um, and I own the space that we're shooting this in. So this amazing yeah. space. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We love a man with a nine to five. Not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. Our careers are so unstable. Yeah. Security. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah. Our careers security. are so unstable that it's just nice to have, you know, that stability. I'm not saying I want you to do that forever, but yeah. it's nice. It is nice. Yeah. I agree. Um, so I really wanted to have all three of you here because I knew that I could just count on you for open and honest conversation. Um, so let's get into it. To start with, we're going to play a quick round of Only Feelings Are Real conversation cards. So if you choose a card and um, answer the question, if you don't want to answer the, the question you choose, you can select another one. <laughs> See how she puts us on the spot. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What would you do if you had no fear? I think I would... I'll think of everything I don't do already because of fear and just do everything. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, fair. that's what I'll do. I can not give specifics because there's a lot. There's a lot everyone's afraid of. Um, in life, but I think I'll pick those things that I normally don't do. And I'll say, you know what? My life goal is to do all those things, whether it's from playing with crocodiles or to um, taking on some extreme business risk that I wouldn't normally take. That's what I would do. Yeah. What is your earliest experience with failure? Um, gosh. Do you know why this is hard for me to answer? Because my perspective, because I, I just feel like I don't fail at anything. I redirect myself. Like I've not failed. It's a restructuring and reprogramming of where I'm supposed to go. So it's hard to, to say, because I guess the things that I failed at, in hindsight, I'm like, no, that was meant to happen because look at me now, look where I am. Um, but earliest experience of failure. That's an amazing answer. Yeah. Oh, she, yeah. <laughs> honestly, that was perfect. Yeah. I'm going to try that when I get my time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, my turn. I had the superficial one while well, you guys all had the deep ones. Unlimited clothing from any designer for the rest of your life. Finish your foolish cards. <laughs> Finish your foolish cards. Or unlimited <laughs> flights from any airline for the rest of your life. So travel is my favorite thing, but for me, I find the most expensive thing is always the hotels, not the flights, because we love like great hotel, I love great hotels. <laughs> so for me, I would choose unlimited clothing from a designer that I really love, like Scaparelli or something. And then that way, yeah, I get all those clothes and I pay for my fights, cause yeah. Okay, all right. Mine says, 
if you were given $10 million on the condition that you could never leave your hometown ever again, would you take it? $10 million. Wh Which hometown? <laughs> Lagos, <laughs> Lagos or Any. Houston? Honestly, it could be any. Oh. Even Houston. You could never leave. The world is big, oh. $10 million. I'll leave. I'll leave. Because I can make $10 million. Sometimes. I love that yeah. energy. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. you know. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't stay in Houston for too long. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my answer. Honestly, yeah, that's not even a difficult question yeah. for me. No, I don't think there's any amount. Yes. Yeah, because what would you do with the money in Houston forever? Okay. Okay. So let's get into our main conversation. Today, we're getting into the nitty gritty of long distance relationships. We all happen to be in long distance relationships here. And coincidentally, they both live in Houston and we're both London girls. H -town -town. <laughs> <laughs> um, long distance relationships get a lot of bad press. I was in an Uber last night and I told the guy, oh yeah, I'm in Houston because my boyfriend lives in Houston, I'm from London. And he was like, ain't no way, ain't no way. <laughs> um, so are they honestly that bad? Let's get into it. So how did you guys meet? I'll let you tell the story, because I feel like I've told this story before so in many different it. ways. Yeah, so I'll let you tell the story. Uh, okay, so uh, Tinder. No, no, no. So I'm like, this is no, not what you said no. two days ago. So um, <laughs> I, I started making comedy content during the pandemic. And after that, um, you know, I was following her content for almost two years. I never even bothered to look up her Instagram page, which is weird because I would see her tweets from Twitter and other pages would post them. And every time I'm like, yes, I agree with this girl's mindset. Who is this girl? Who is speaking? Who is this girl? <laughs> and for years I kept, I would see tweets like that. And then one day in 2020, I said, let me just look up her page. And I looked up, I'm like, oh my gosh, she, she attractive too on top of that. And then I followed the page and I started interacting with her content and found out um, years later that she thought I was trying to get her attention oh. from doing that. She, she would never agree with me on that, but I genuinely really liked her content. And then um, it took a while. I think one of my videos went viral and uh, maybe that's when I came across her radar. And because of that, she saw my page and then she went on my page, she saw my picture. She was like, you know, you know, she told her friends, you know, this man's handsome, isn't it? And then, <laughs> in it, in it, in it. It. that's exactly what he I said. That's exactly what she said. I, I even, no. That's exactly I what she like said. I feel regret telling him to tell Yeah, anyway, story. continue. Exactly I'll put in in a second. Continue. <laughs> anyway, right. And then, uh, from there, uh, she went through some of my content. I make comedy videos, but whenever I'm talking on a serious topic, I, you know, I stick to my values when it comes to relationships. And she saw a couple of those videos. And she said, you know what, I like that. And then she followed me. And then she started commenting on some of my photos. Uh, like I, I think my birthday was yeah, a, a couple of days I after she started following yeah. me. And she would comment on the attire. She tried everything to not give me a genuine, like, First of um, all. I like you compliments. <laughs> so she was like, fire fit or a nice outfit. Was, was the thing of fire? You cannot <laughs> drop love emoji. <laughs> it was so hard to drop a love emoji. I don't know why. No, really. Anyway. Anyway, but right. at the time, so, I didn't know, like, w mm. if you were in a relationship or if you were, like, single. So, so I'm not going to just... just testing the words. Yeah, I'm being respectful. I want to see if you That's buy it. That's what tell us, <laughs> Yes. So uh, after that, we're just, like, mutuals online. We would, you know, interact with each other's content, and that was it. There was no flirting or anything. Should I skip the part about my brother? No, no you're going to include the part about your brother. So, okay, so... Then one day, my brother um, told me that... Uh, Guy, I've seen this girl that recently started following you, that she, she has this great mindset like this, that guy, if you know Tostam, if you don't approach her, I would tell her that you're interested. I'm like, guy, I'm just, I used to be one of those guys that was always focused on tech, that, would, that believed that he has to be successful first in his tech career, and then Mrs. Wright will come along. And I said, don't worry about it, that I'm fine. I think she's attractive too. On the things I know about her, she's a great catch. But I'm just trying to focus on myself. His brother did not listen there. And my brother, I got that DM. I don't know if he was drinking one day. He just went to DM and <laughs> said, excuse me, he's interested. His name is Tony. I said, see trouble. Then Tony went to go and 
um, messaged me saying, hey, is this your brother? <laughs> and she, he, she sent me the screenshot. I said, God, what am I going to do now? How can I get out of this? And he, she, I, I had to explain to her that, oh, he means well. Um, he just doesn't like to see instances where he sees two great people. That are interest that are great for each other and just let it go. Essentially, so, he threw you an alley oop. Essentially, why is everyone exactly. keep saying that? So listen, <laughs> he listen, did though. Listen, so uh, he did that, and I told him that um, you don't have to worry about it. I told Tony that you don't have to worry about that. That he was just trying to be friendly, and Tony was like, "Oh, gotcha." I found out. Uh, after we started going out, that she almost gave up on me after that because she said that. that. Do you know what? why? Because I saw it as his brother giving him an alley oop, and I thought he was going to bite. Like he was going to be like, anyway. Now my brother said that. I'm interested. He didn't even say anything. I was like, okay. <laughs> I genuinely just liked who she was, and you know that was hard for her to understand. And around December, or January of of 2020, 2022 January, um, I was in church. You know those. One of my friends in church said that, uh, who are you to think that you're going to be successful and then Mrs. Wright is going to come along? As you pray for your partner, also pray for divine timing. Because sometimes you meet people and then you know, you, you've heard people say that it's not the, it's not the right, time. right time in your life. So you pray for those things too. So generally, I said, uh, of people I know, there's one person on the surface level that I know of that has all the values I'm looking for that I'm also attracted to. I'm not going to lie. Attraction is important too. You want to be attracted to your partner too. Doesn't mean only. So I messaged that and I went straight to the point. I said, um, Finally. Hey, um, <laughs> I was going to do it. I wasn't shy. He was trying to exercise patience. Proves you that I wasn't shy. I was very direct. I told her that, listen, I know who you are on Instagram. I need to know who you are outside of Instagram. Gang, gang. How do we make this happen? And then she sent me a number. Um, less than five minutes, I sent her a message. An hour later, we had the phone call. And the rest was history. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. So check your DMs. That's my thing. <laughs> check your DMs. You never know. <laughs> That's my point. Okay, so should we tell them how we met? Yeah, I want to know yeah, how this you is, met. This is you. Okay. You so we have a mutual friend. And I was at lunch with my mutual friend. And then he came. He just crashed our lunch. He did not come to see me because... My friend wasn't trying to hook us up. On paper, I don't think we're compatible. So I don't think anyone would know both of us and be like, oh, I really want to match you guys up. Mm. So he came and we were at lunch and then we had a speaking engagement. My friend and I were speaking and he came with us. And it wasn't like an initial, oh my God, who is that for either of us? Mm. We just, or was it for you? Oh, I, I saw the eyebrows. <laughs> so I saw the eyebrows. <laughs> It, I did a little bit of stalking. Just like, <laughs> oh, I confess now. I confess. I confess. Oh, I that because the whole time he was like, "Yeah, I didn't even like you at first. Anyway, <laughs> so we went to the speaking engagement, and throughout the day, I just saw how he was with his friends, male friends, in, in as well, and I felt like he was a very affectionate man. And that showed me that he would be secure in his mas that he was secure in his masculinity and that he would be confident enough for a woman like me. Because I've had a lot of um, experiences with intimidated, like men who feel intimidated. Yeah. And so I was not about that. I wanted someone who was very secure, very confident. And just the fact that he was comfortable enough to show men affection, yeah. let me know that he didn't care what people that. thought about him. And then I left or something. What happened? Oh yeah, and then uh, we were at the event and the event ended, I was speaking to someone and then he left. And I just remember feeling a tinge of like disappointment that he didn't say bye. I was like, how, how, how did he leave <laughs> without so saying bye? And up until that point, it hadn't registered that I liked him. But yeah. then when I felt that, like, it was really like, it pierced me. Mm. And I was like, so okay, maybe- So you liked maybe me from day one? I, I was interested in you. And okay. then okay. I go home and then I saw a DM from him. And the DM said, what is your number? Because I'm not going to be one of your Instagram hoes. Oh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you see how we do? Transparency. Yep. Strategies. Strategies. And we've spoken nearly every day since then, except one day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say that was accurate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. All right. Moving on to the next question. Um, 
Did any of you guys play hard to get or was it easy, relatively easy for you guys in the relationship? Do you want to go? Uh, I feel like we none of us played hard to get, but but in the beginning I was like, damn, like, what's going on? <laughs> Do you see me? <laughs> I guess like I was, I'm more used to like, say for example, if I have an inkling that a guy's interested, then my expectation is that I would know sooner rather than later. But I had an inkling he was interested, but he wasn't really doing anything. And I was like, what's the catch? Like, do you have a girlfriend? You're not interested, what's going on? And then it took so long, I was like, okay, he's not interested. I'm not his type, I'm not what he's looking for. I'll get over it, it is what it is. So I like gave up. So it's not that he was playing hard to get, but he was, he was taking his time. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like you were taking your time. Wait. Question though, was it worth the wait? Oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah, I would, in hindsight, I would have waited longer. Yeah, 100%. Okay. It was worth it. <laughs> um, was it easy for us? Was it, it was relatively easy for us, I think. Um, I feel like you played hard to get oh, a little really? bit. I really do feel like he played hard to get. Okay, because... this is what I believe. I, can't, I don't know <laughs> no, why. He did. I, I, I can see. <laughs> no, we had this conversation the other day. But anyway, can't, he was can't. very, very consistent. The most consistent any man, anybody has ever been. I mean, constant FaceTimes, constant texts. From the beginning, there was no fronting. If he wanted to text me four times and I hadn't responded, he would text me, excuse were, me, no why games. haven't you responded? That doesn't no sound games. like someone who's playing hard to get. But then, oh. when, you know, he was very friendly, very just genuine, when I was like, I liked him so quickly, yeah. and I was like trying to get that energy, yeah. the liking energy wasn't there. So I had consistence, like a friend, oh. a great person. Which is generally my approach. But I, I didn't know. have like the romantic, like, oh, he really oh, wants okay, me. I and it see. took him a long time to give me that, like, okay, I'm ready to commit. I feel like it wasn't, it wasn't, you played hard to get. I was supposed to answer that question. <laughs> I don't answer. Why did you answer the question? You asked me. I told you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, she did. She did. No, I agree with everything you say for the most part. But yeah, we'll, we'll talk what? about the rest later. No, I'm nosy. Why was that your approach? You said that was your approach. Um, I found in the past that generally going into a situationship or a relationship with the like intention of, oh, I want you, I've been met with a lot of rejection. I see. So hmm. yeah, but generally for me. I also would rather want to spend time to get to know the person first as a friend. friend. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if we're not friends, then what do we have? Yeah. That's right. Um, so that's generally my approach. Oh, you want to cry? No, they were just missing out. And I'm just, I'm happy. I'm happy because we ended up here. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's generally how, how it works for me. That's right. I, yeah. like to, I like to start off as friends and then we can build from there. That's not right. the other way around. Right. Okay, I love that. Did you guys worry about whether you could trust each other in a long distance relationship? No. I mean, do you want to answer this? Well, I can. Oh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> I am the, uh, some people might call me delusional, but I am the king of, I will trust everybody until you give me a reason not to. Uh, some people do the opposite, which is fine, but I think that doing the opposite is not a way to live. You can't, you know, people go through things, people have faced, you know, bad experiences, but people need to understand that those individuals have nothing to do with the new individual you meet. So I'll, I always would go with that. And on top of that, when we met, our second phone call was seven hours. Wow. Seven wow. hours and some minutes. I still have a screenshot of it. Seven yeah. hours yeah, and yeah, some yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. It was a well, Saturday. No, still not at that level. <laughs> it was a Saturday, um, I, we, seven hours. And during that call, I don't know what we didn't talk about. Yeah. Wait, so and that means you must have been up to like, God knows how long it was. 5 a.m. We started like... I, I slept late that time. day. I yeah. slept late. I think for me, um, I kind of saw from the onset that Taiwa has such great values. And he... It was like, I guess the first time in my experience, romantically speaking to a man and thinking, is your moral compass better than mine? Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I've, okay. I'm used to being... I don't want to say the better half, because that's the wrong thing to say, but I'm used to being uh, in situations where I feel like I've done more self-work, basically. And speaking to him, I was like, this is different. I feel like this is a man that's done a lot of self-work, who knows what he wants, who knows himself and knows his values, knows his principles, and he's, he's disciplined, right? And that's not to say I'm not, because I'm very disciplined, but I was like, 
I feel like I've met my equal, if not someone who is even more committed to like their identity. And because of that, I, I didn't have any worries. I felt like everything he said, I could believe in and that he was like a man of his word. And he didn't give me any inkling of someone trying to like deceive me. And I guess he was so intentional from the beginning. Like we got to talking, we had that long call. Within two weeks, he had bought a flight to come to the UK in that first month. And this is a man that lives on the other side of the world. So I was like, this man wants me, yeah, I ain't worried. He's, he's he wants me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I, yeah, I guess he makes long distance, being in a long distance relationship easier for me. I think to add to what Tony says is that it came from a place of telling her things that I could have kept her, kept from her. And when you do that, it shows the willingness you're willing to go when you had the opportunity of hiding certain things. Yeah. And when I would do that, uh, she would even say that you could choose to have not told me this, but yet the fact that you still wanted to tell me this shows that you're willing to trust me to not do any harm with that information. And I feel like that was another step I took again on top of that. On her end... Um, yeah, you laid all the cards on the table. Yeah, like I said, I want to be in a place where if somebody was to say, oh, you know, Tyler did this in the past, she can say, I know, he told me. <laughs> so there is no skeleton, she wouldn't know. And then that's where it also came from. But on her end too, it was from a place of knowing that she she, she was she was willing to be so open that it, it even had me question that why? Like well, what exactly what exactly is it? Like I was like, what's the catch? Like why is she why is she being so why open? Why is she being so you? open uh, to me? And it made me realize that there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are just you know, some people just have the same values as you and they're willing to go above and beyond and tell you so much because they're willing to build trust at the start. And if you can do that, if, even if you guys are spending months away, you can know that in the absence of your partner, you guys are willing to still respect your relationship. There's a statement I always tell her that uh, whenever I'm talking to anyone, if there's, a, if there's a woman next to me and I'm talking to her, my rule is that how would you talk to her if your partner was standing next to you? That's how you're supposed to talk to her. Even in DMs, if, if Tony was next to me, the way I should, I'm responding when she's not around should be the same as when she's there. Are you like responding? No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not supposed to respond. No, no, she she got you on that one. I know, I know, to, I know. To the mutual. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, mutual. Okay, I'm playing, I'm playing. I know, I know. Okay. She, told you she funny too. <laughs> told you she funny too. But yeah, that's, that's exactly what uh, I did. So two things. I'm curious about why you felt comfortable enough to be so open okay. from the beginning. Okay. Um, I am a big believer in like gut instincts. And I think generally I have quite good discernment when it comes to like people I've dated or, or dating. It's not been perfect, but I think with age, my discernment has gotten better and better and better. And with him, it's like something just told me that what I was seeing was what I was getting and he was being genuine. But aside from the gut feeling, I feel like love is all about risk, right? And it's like, you can never experience life-changing love and romance if you're unwilling to take a risk. And I was just like, you know what? I don't wanna be this person who's just jaded and angry and scared all the time. Like I need to work on that element of embracing love. And I had done that over like the 34 years of my life. So. When I met, what, how old was I when I met you? 33? 30, 30, no, 32. 30, 32 yeah. So when I met Taiwo, I was just like, you know what? <sighs> I'm just jumping head first and I'm just gonna embrace it, take it for what it is. If it bites me in the butt, it is what it is. But at least I can say that I wasn't restricting myself. And this was someone on paper that had everything I wanted. Like, you know when you have your dream list? I, I wrote my list. I said, hey, I want a guy who's this, a guy who I'm attracted to, who has great values, who comes from a loving family, who is uh, well-educated, who has a great job, who does this, who continue, does that. Yeah, and don't stop, don't stop, don't yeah, stop. So, continue, continue. so I was like, I would be stupid to have this guy that is like the epitome of this like person I've written down 
and he's right in front of me and I'm just, I'm not going to give him 100% of me. You're going to get this 100% with you like it or not, right? Um, so yeah, I think it was just like a, a combination of things. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting to me because I see so many parallels. I was definitely already jaded, mm -hmm. but I think being met with this person who was so emotionally mature, so genuine, I couldn't be, like, it, it yeah. unjaded me, that's if that's that. a thing. Um, no, I never worried about trust in a long-distance relationship, which I'm a worried person. Yeah, I'm, anxious, I'm yeah. a, yeah. So to not be worried and anxious about, I feel like cheating is the thing that gets the most conversation with yeah. relationships. And for us, trust was, it just was never really a thing. Um, like, doubting, like, let me trust or not trust this person because what you said about giving so much information, yeah. talking so much. We have such an open relationship and this is not coming from an arrogant place because with life, anything can happen. Anything can change. Like, niggas is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I said to my friends, I really feel like if Falabi was going to cheat on me, he would ask me. Like, I really feel like he would, I feel like we've built the kind of relationship where we would say to each other, I felt a little bit attracted to that person. Mm. And not in a way to hurt each no, other. No, I love that. Just transparency. To, so yeah. Transparency is... Even like with that time, there was a time where he went dancing yeah. with a friend and someone saw him. Like he went dancing with a fem female friend and someone saw him and he got back, not to me, but to him. And then he told me, I already knew he was going. I didn't feel any, I was completely fine with him going. It was also just country dancing where you actually- <laughs> Like line dancing. Exactly. Yeah. I get that, I get that. I get that. Give me a break. I get that. <laughs> but it yeah. was still enough for someone to right. bring yeah. it up. You because know, it wasn't right. you, obviously. Yeah. I had the same thing with his oh, sister. Someone saw him hugging a woman at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it was his sister. My twin. <laughs> my twin. Wow. I met so, my twin at the airport and somebody was like, wow, already. So how, how did you? Fine. Like, how did you know about that? Did he tell you or? Yeah. So the person, was it, they messaged you or got in contact with him to say, oh, I saw you at the airport oh my hugging God. on a woman and oh it was God. his sister. Wow. So he Every has the same thing. <laughs> what? I actually appreciate the person who messaged for Labby because it was his friend's wife who told his friend and then the friend like messaged him and I appreciate her for looking out. But like, I already knew I didn't have a problem with it. A tiny part of me was a little embarrassed that someone thought that he was cheating on. You know when it's like, if no one saw, then you don't care. But when someone brings it up, you're like, ah, should I feel somehow, is this embarrassing? But ultimately I knew that it was happening yeah. and it's just so open yeah. and yeah, we've, never had to worry about trust. And the thing you said about moral compasses as well, meeting someone that I feel, I always say, all my friends say, like, we know Falabi is a better person than I am. <laughs> his, his moral That's compass fast. is That's way fast. better. His character is way better. I'm laughing because I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything, I would say that I put you on too much of a pedestal in the beginning because he was so perfect that I actually put him on a pedestal and mm -hmm. I would say this year he showed me that he was human. I had to, <laughs> I had to balance it out. Oh, I don't like being okay, fair, yeah, fair. I had to balance it out. And so that was very shocking to me and it like destabilized us a little bit when I had to bring you down to life like and find out that you're just like everyone else. <laughs> okay. What's the most difficult thing about a long distance relationship for you guys? What was the most difficult thing? Um, so Tao obviously makes it very easy because he's like someone that's easy to trust. He's super reassuring, super loving. Um, but I think the biggest challenge for me is probably the physical touch element. Because sometimes I'm at home and I'm having a bad day. I just want to hug. You guys are just saying. And it's like, yeah, like sometimes I just want to hug. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's probably the most difficult part for me. Just wanting to physically be beside your person and knowing that like if you want to do that it's going to cost you mm -hmm. x thousands of pounds yeah. yeah um so yeah i think that's it like the the physical element because i feel like relationships fundamentally are all about friendship communication and and fostering that foundation and having that like connection right and you can have that companionship in a long distance relationship because 
it, it, in fact, it actually encourages you to have a deeper relationship because all you can do is talk, right? All you can do is talk. But the one thing you cannot recreate is being in each other's presence. So for me, it's just the physical presence. How about you, bro? I would say for me, it's um, just like she said, being around. She will tell you this. Uh, in the day, I think I call her more times than I have to do this. Like, <laughs> I call her more than 10 times in a day. <laughs> Even with my busy schedule, I still try and make sure that I have one minute. Like, if I have a meeting back to back, in those 60 seconds, I can call her just to talk to her. But I realize it's because I always want to tell her every little thing about the day. Or, yo, do you see this online that's going on? I, I just want to talk to her. And because of, thank God that we have things like FaceTime now, and you know, you get to talk to them. But it's not the same as like when they're around. So, that element, it can be challenging, but I always think about the long-term goal and what we're trying to do and the fact that we always plan every meetup, like one or two trips in our head. So I try and do that to be optimistic and not think too much about how challenging it is. But as of now, it's just the element of not them not being yeah. around every single day. It's interesting yeah. you say that because it's kind of the same for us. Like yeah. For me, the hardest thing about long distance is actually like saying bye. You know, like we spent those airports, a month together, those airports. we spent two months together, and now you're telling me that I have to go back to Houston and be in Houston for two, three months without this person that I've enjoyed their company over a long period of time. Okay, so this question is actually for the guys. So for Labi and Taiwo, how are you so confident in your masculinity that external opinions don't affect the way you show up as a man. Some context to this, I find that a lot of men who show a lot of respect, a lot of reverence, and just show that they are family oriented and love their wives and their families, it doesn't even take a lot right. to ruffle people's feathers, but men like Russell Wilson, or men like Alexis Ohanian, um, Serena, Serena Williams' husband, Ciara's husband, they don't even have to do much. They just have to show that they're healthy. Yeah. And everyone is in flames and is dissing them yeah. and calling them all sorts simp. of corny, yeah. simp. Yeah. It's actually insane how little they have to do to get called that. Mm -hmm. So how are you so comfortable to show up as yourselves? Even having this conversation, and being so open with your affection, what, it, what is your secret? Should we, let's start with Taiwan. Well, uh, for me, I think, first of all, we live in a society where people try to equate going above and beyond for your wife or partner as a sign of weakness, which it makes no sense at all. Because if it's someone you actually value, you, you treat it like a partnership. You want to be able to make sure that they are happy too. So, and that's the common denominator from what Russell Wilson does for Sierra, from, from what Serena Williams' husband does. And because of that, people have started developing words like simp and stuff like that. People forgetting that it's not the case. Because one big um, component of this is e emotion. People uh, try to make it look like, as a man, you are not supposed to show all forms of emotion. Forgetting that anger is also an emotion. And they love to say, oh, no, nah, I'm a man, I don't show emotion. But they get angry. They'll say, no, <laughs> it's not emotion. It's an, it's an act of, what do they call it? It's an act of passion. My anger, guy, is an, <laughs> anger is an so emotion too. And as a man, what type of man will miss out on the whole human experience when you cannot show uh, that you can cry? Uh, for something that involves your own woman, that you can go above and beyond for your own woman, and you're claiming you're a man, this, you're missing out on... The thing masculinity only applies to things that are perceived as strength by being, you know, tough, mean. That's one side of it. If you're not able to go above and beyond for your woman, um, sorry to go scriptural, but if you're not willing to show sacrificial love like the Bible talks about, that's, that's you missing out. You're not getting the full experience. So I think like for me, even from the way my, my, my dad raised me, he always was that person that he would never spell things out like, you know, but he would always show us that he was willing to do anything and go above and beyond for my mom, for the whole family. And that was something I said, if that's going to be my definition of masculinity, 
that is what I'm going to do forever. I would always go above and beyond for, by God's grace, my yawo, my life. So <laughs> that is it for me. Um, so for me, I don't, I actually don't think about it as much. I don't really ever think, okay, what's, is this a, is this a manly thing or what I'm doing is, f I don't, it doesn't cross my mind that way. I just, I just do what feels natural. I do right. what I enjoy. Like even growing up, I might enjoy singing in the choir and I remember being teased for that, but imagine. I love music. I'm not going to sing it. I'm, exactly, I can't imagine. <laughs> I, I'm not going to stop what I enjoy doing because that doesn't consider me a man. Yeah. And also that means I'm giving the power to someone else to define who I am, right. which to me, doesn't make sense. So I, I generally don't think about it. I just, I really just do me. I know it seems very straightforward. As you know, it's, yeah, as you it's, should, I, yeah. I like the answer yeah. because, you know, a lot of times they like to put certain stereotypes or things and say, well, that's not manly. No. Yeah. Who, who made that rule? Exactly. Who, who defined that? Exactly. People are just saying stuff based on, I, I feel like it's a bunch of people who don't really, who think that it's work to, let's say, commit to their woman or go or do those certain things exactly. that, you know, like sing, you know. Yeah. And I feel like instead of them, you know, doing a healthy thing of like researching into it and seeing what works and what doesn't, it's a coping mechanism, mechanism they use to just say, well, instead of me changing, let's just say all oh, this is not mine. It's, yeah. exactly. So it's, it's a cope, but um, I'll not let somebody's nine months turn and tell me that this is how I'm supposed to do certain things. If it works for me and I'm happy doing it, why not? And in connection to what you said, Falabi, I feel like a lot of men aren't themselves. Mm -hmm. Like where you said it, you just do what comes natural, you're just yourself. A lot of men aren't themselves because they're so consciously like aware of what people might say. If they want to do certain things, they want to do musical theatre, they don't do it. They want to sing, they don't do it. They want to dance in public, they don't do it. They want to love on their partner, they don't do it because they restrict themselves. And I think honestly, like that contributes to some of the high rates of depression and loneliness we see in men. And, and, and I, it's not that I want to use buzzwords, but toxic masculinity is partly the reason why a lot of men I think are unhappy because they do not feel supported to be themselves. And it's a vicious cycle because they're not being themselves. They're inadvertently not supporting other men in being themselves. So yeah, I think it's important for men to, to hear that you don't even think about it. You're just yourself and nothing is wrong with just being yourself. Someone will love you for being yourself exactly. as well. They, they always love to say that when, uh, if you, if you, when you're being yourself, that you know, your woman might weaponize that against you if you show any sign of weakness. Just date better people. Yeah, So just date better people instead of trying to bring your affliction into everybody's yeah. story. Just date other people. Also, like I've heard that there was, recently there was a video I saw where this uh, lady said that, um, she doesn't like men crying on their wedding day. Oh. I said, okay, so let me get this straight. Your man is happy, happy that he's finally marrying his dream partner on one of the most important days of his life. And the emotion with music and all that should, okay. It could, it could even be tears because of joy. He has yeah. to prove what to other guys. People miss out on all the beautiful things in life because they're trying to play a role. Yeah. So I hope people get to do what makes them happy and not try and use words like, you know, or try and say that certain things are not masculine because right. they're trying to fit in. Yeah. What I was said, I love what yeah. said. I said. I really love both of your responses because when we got together, that was like, that was what attracted me to you. As I said, how secure you were in your masculinity. It showed me that you could be someone that I would have a successful relationship with. But I think that if you had come two or three years earlier, I think that what I, I, had, I hadn't done the work learning myself. I think that what I was looking for was completely different. And I think I used to feel validation from men who were actually not very nice people, who were actually quite mean, but when they give me like a crumb of attention, I snatch it and then, so they would treat me badly or be avoidant. And I, w I used to play those games with men where I actually allowed myself be treated badly in exchange for like a few moments of happiness where I felt like someone who is like a bad boy in quotes was giving me attention. I'm curious about whether you ever dealt with that kind of foolishness. Um, 
I can't say I was ever drawn to emotionally unavailable men, but I've ha definitely have found myself in uh, relationships with men that like that warped my attachment style. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So um, I've always been quite secure when it comes to relationships. And I think that's partially down to like my parents and seeing the relationship they have and, and growing up in that kind of dynamic, like seeing a couple together um, for long periods of time, loving on each other was not foreign to me. So mm -hmm. I never really had um, that kind of like trauma attached to relationships as such. But I was definitely, I've definitely found myself in relationships where I thought the person wasn't that way. And then they turned out to develop into, or not develop, because they were always emotion, uh, emotionally unavailable and they didn't like commitment. But I guess that by the time I affirmed it, it was too late. I was already, I already had feelings for them, right? So it's not like I went into it thinking, oh, I kind of attracted to this person because they're a bit, you know, um, the attraction developed over time and then with time I came to conclude that they were emotionally unavailable commitment foes. Um, the only thing I would say that I had to work on was being comfortable with long periods of peace. Mm. So my dad is a very emotionally available man. Um, but I did kind of grow up and I, I shared this in my first book. Um, seeing my parents argue here and there. And for that reason, they're in a great place now, but it wasn't always like that. They had to work to get there. So for that reason, I would be drawn to men that like were open, that made it obvious they liked me. Um, and I would find myself, and I actually joke with Tywo, because I say that as far as like being an adult, he's my first adult crush. Because I was always, I would always find myself, mm -hmm. unlike you that would, <laughs> that would find like uh, unemotionally available men attractive. It's like, if you like me, I like you, because you like me. If you don't like me or if you're being funny, then I don't like you. But if you show me you like me, then I like you. But I always found myself with men who wanted me more than I wanted them, because they, they would grow on me, because I'm like, oh, he likes me, let me give him a chance. But Tyler was the first time where I was like, I like you just as much as you like me. This is cool, <laughs> this is new, you don't have to grow on me. Um, but the downside, I think, like growing up, my downside was that if I was in a relationship and like, everything was peaceful for a long period of time. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Like, there needs to be some fire. You know, what's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like. The peace is too long. Yeah, the peace is too long. What's going on? Like, I'll be like, this is kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, yeah. what, what is, the, like, I want you to like me, but be, there needed to be roughness around the edges somehow. Like, we'd, we needed to argue about something or there needs to be like a bone of contention. And then, um, so I guess that's where I was a bit different. Uh, and I had to work on that. And over the years, I would say like in my 30s, I definitely like nipped that in the bud. And I came to the realization, I wrote about it, that you need to work on changing your comfort zone sometimes. Sometimes your comfort zone isn't always healthy. And my comfort mm. zone wasn't healthy. Like I found discomfort in long periods of peace, which was so yeah. warped. And I had to like tell myself that just because you observe this and you've had previous relationships that weren't peaceful doesn't mean that like a peaceful relationship is abnormal or bad or there's like a catch embrace it so that's what I had to work on that is so interesting because I was speaking about this the other day with my mom and my sister and my sister and I were raised very similarly but my sister I said this thing about oh why do girls grow up so with lacking so much confidence and they like bad boys. And my sister said to me, I never, I never went through that phase yeah. of liking emotionally unavailable men. I've always liked nice people. She's like, I've never been attracted to mean people. Mm -hmm. And I found it so interesting that two people who were raised in the same so, household yeah. could, and on the surface, I'm the more confident person than my sister. Like you would think I value myself so much more because of how I appear. Yeah, right. But it's so interesting that she's been so secure from the beginning. Mm. And I went through this phase, I'm still unpacking it. <laughs> um, ooh, what's the best thing you've learned from your worst fight? Can we go first? Yeah, you answer this one, I'm uh, curious. <laughs> She's always no 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 no. no, no. <laughs> no go finish that. Uh, okay. <laughs> she's always right. It's gonna say this one. She's always no, right. No, she always no. thinks she's right. <laughs> uh, no, um, biggest thing that I learned that I didn't even know that I would love 
especially coming from my previous relationship, was that when we have an argument, the goal is to understand each other, not about who's right. If you spend more time focusing on being right, it might end there, but the battalion continues another day. So I learned that we are both on the same side. We just work things differently. We both are looking out for each other. We want the best for each other. So anytime it's getting, if the few times it's gotten heated, we would reset and listen to what each other is really saying. Give each other time to speak, don't interrupt. And when we hear what each other is saying, every single time that's happened, we get to understand where each other's coming from. So I got to learn that we are both on the same side. She's not my enemy, I'm not her enemy. And that made me realize that, okay, when we have arguments, okay, we are both arguing for the sake of making this work for, for us and not making it one against each other, so. It's like you're yeah. listening to understand and not respond, essentially. Thank you, yeah. that's, that's it. Yeah, that really is it. I would, yeah, I would have said the same thing. Like, a lot of the time when you argue in a relationship, it's not that there's, well, providing you're with a good person, yeah. Sometimes someone is in the wrong, but when you're with someone yeah. you love and you trust and you trust their values and you trust their belief system, it's rarely that someone is right and someone is wrong. You just have a difference in perspective or there's some like gap in the communication that needs to be ironed out. And yeah, I guess it's the same thing as, as what you said. Like yeah. our worst fight taught me that actually is there's no real issue here. We just need to see things from each other's perspective. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's that's it's it's almost the same with us as well. I mean, I remember, I don't know what fight it was, but for me, tying. I think a lot of the things that I've noticed in fights that don't mean anything, like you said, it's just different communication styles, yeah. like also different cultural backgrounds. Like mm -hmm. there are certain things that you might say a certain type of way that I might read differently because I've seen it differently in other places. Yeah. So to me, it might seem like you are calling me a bastard or something, but that might, <laughs> that might be the word that means love in yeah. your own language. That's a real you know? thing, that is real. Like seriously, and, yeah. and also the way like, that is real. In, in those spaces, the way you communicate also plays like a big factor because some people like me, if you yell at me, I, I, don't, I don't do it. I don't, I, it doesn't work for me. And my sister here, <laughs> she can raise her voice. Oh, for this this one, she's a problem. <laughs> but like learning how to communicate, <laughs> no, 100%, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's generally how it is. I think, I think understanding how you guys communicate, like your communication styles, and also realizing that there are things about the person's past that might play into how they are reacting. It might not necessarily be them. So making them realize how they are coming across or what they've said and how it makes you feel, I think diffuses a lot of fights. And I've had to learn that the hard way a lot of times. So, so let me put this more plainly. Yeah, I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> she loves it, she loves it. This wasn't our worst fight, but it was our first fight. It's our second worst fight. It was our first fight. And when I went into that fight, I thought that when you fight with people, you shout at them and you say, fuck you and fuck off. Like, duh. Like, we're fighting, so. <laughs> but I was like, hey. what? Hey. Oh, yeah, it's like a it. fight. <laughs> oh, God, it's basically, I'm not from, <laughs> I didn't realize that you fight with people and then you like make them breakfast or is it poisoned? Like if we're fighting, we are fighting. So we had this fight and I did all my, you know, fuck yeah. yous and raising my voice and everything. He was very upset, mm. but you how know, was he when this was going on? Like demeanor wise? Very calm and very confused. Like almost like he wasn't, I think he was shocked. Okay. I think he, that's not what he's experienced. Yeah. It's not what he saw at home. Yeah. It's just against what he stands for. So I think he was very shocked. How, what was your yeah, emotion? Yeah, I, I didn't believe it was happening. So I just let her go. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, she was on a roll. So I just let her go. I just let her go. So we went to bed, woke up the next morning. It was our last night in Tulum. This was our first trip together. He woke me up to watch the sunset because he, sunrise, because he knows how much I love the sunrise. So then after that, this is the most, like the sternest, the strictest anyone has ever been with me. And he just said to me, no raised voice, no mean words. He just said to me like, never, ever speak to me like that again unless like I will never speak to you, like this will be done. He's like, I don't tolerate shouting. I don't tolerate swearing. And I just don't think it's necessary. Yeah. And I was like, 
It was the first time. No, honestly, that's when I realized that that's not how people yeah. fight. I really thought that that was how people fought. And since that day, I've never done that again, right? I mean, maybe like three or four or five or six <laughs> times. <laughs> sure, I, have not, I haven't sworn. No, no, she hasn't. And She's even not, if I raise my voice, back. it's not like, right. it's not the same, Shab. And yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm learning that's and I'm good. improving. I love that. And it meant a lot to me that he did that. It was very stern. It also means a lot to me that, that you way, took that feedback and actually you've, over time, have change your approach to fights. Yeah, I respect you so much. I love that you waited for the day, you waited for me to get it all out. So it wasn't like, I wasn't talking and you were like, you didn't make me feel stupid. And then the next day you came like, never try that again. It, 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 I, I really love that story though, because sometimes I think when it comes to relationships, people think they need to be the perfect person before they get in one. But I do believe that you can be in a relationship and simultaneously grow together or become better as a result of being in a healthy relationship. Because when you're with a good man, a good man does help you improve. When you're with a good woman, she helps you improve and you work on being better versions of yourself together. And like you said, you had this opinion and you thought this was how it's supposed to be until you were with Folabi and then you had this argument, you realized, oh, this is something about me I should change. And this will help me foster healthier relationships with people generally, like friends and family. And I love that, like, you were able to do it in such a gentle way. And the thing about the way you said the... Uh, it took a lot. The way you said that he woke you after that and said, come watch the sunset. Do you know what that reminds me of? There's this image that I love. It's one of my favourite images. It's of an old couple. It's raining and you can tell they're pissed at each other, like a cartoon couple. Is this the one and with he's the holding up the umbrella yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's he's protecting her regardless. And I think that is such a great reflection of what relationships should be. Mm. Like even in anger, you, you love each other. You love the person enough to do things for them. Yeah, yeah I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> it's taking a lot. Like when I'm angry to like still look out for you and everything. But yeah, I've definitely, definitely, definitely become a much better person in all areas of my life, in friendships, with my team, you know, leading a team, the way I speak to people, yeah. pausing and reflecting before you respond. And I 100% give you the credit for that. I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. That's, right. That's all I needed. <laughs> That's all I needed. And like you said, with... Um, your person rubbing off on you or yeah. showing you becoming a better person yeah. in the relationship. Even with attachment styles, when we started, my attachment style was definitely avoidant, anxious, like depending on the person, sometimes avoidant, sometimes anxious. Um, and ever since being in a relationship with you, I would say my attachment style is now secure, like firmly secure. And I don't know if that would go across to another, I mean, hopefully there's no other relationship, but I'm curious as to whether that's just because I'm with you and yours was so secure that I've been influenced or whether I'm delivered. <laughs> it's a combination of both though, like mm. your personal self growth coupled with the way your partner is. Mm -hmm. I think the combination yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. What about you guys? How have oh, yeah. um, oh, <laughs> So my attachment style, um, it has changed over the years. So I would say that like my first ever relationship, I was 16 years old. I was with this boy for two years. It was like high school relationship. So nothing like serious, but he was a very like lovely boyfriend. So my first experience of love was healthy. So I started off secure. I obviously had my parents' example. I had this healthy relationship and it was like, great, 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 great. Went to university, catastrophe. I was in such a toxic <laughs> catastrophe. I was in such a toxic relationship. It was really bad in hindsight. I'm like, why did I do that? But it helped me become stronger. And then after that, I was in another relationship with someone who was an avoidant and that made little Miss Secure very anxious. And it pulled out so much anxiety from me um, that by the time I had like there were points in that relationship I didn't even recognize myself because mm. I was like, this isn't me. Why do I care about these things? Why am I arguing over these things? And I realized it's because I did not feel secure because the person was so avoidant. Mm. And then leaving that relationship, doing the self-work like you did, and then obviously going from that relationship to healthier relationships and then eventually being with Taiwo. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Have I even complimented you yet? <laughs> um, this is the most secure I've ever been. And this is this relationship feels the most natural to me. And I think that is similarly to you, Fisayo, a combination of the work I've done after that avoidant relationship, coupled with the type of man he is. Mm. 
I honestly think even if I hadn't done the self work and I approached my relationship with him as a very anxious person, I would likely after the two years we've spent together, coming up to two years, be way more secure because he gives me so much reassurance. He's just so loving, so caring. Um, like sometimes I feel like I can't even match up, like the level of reassurance he gives me and the love he gives me. And it's like, I, I can't be anything other than secure with this person. Like. I, I can't even imagine being anxious just because of the way he is. So yeah, I think it's the same thing. Like, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. What about your, your attachment style? I think that you've well, always been quite secure, though. Well, for me, uh, I've always been quite secure only because, uh, first of all, I've always been very picky in my relationships. So I've only been in two. And um, in those two, I, maybe I was lucky that I didn't get to experience really, you know, not so pleasant relationships. <laughs> so, you know, I'd always gone in with the mindset of, you know, you can build trust, um, give them, trust them before you give them a reason not to. And, you know, coming with that and even what I'd seen growing up with my family yeah. and how my dad was always willing to show um, care. They might not say, sometimes, you know, let me they speak for my own parents. It, yeah. They might not say, like, you know, I love I you here and there, but they'll say, have you eaten today? Or, or <laughs> yeah. they'll say... Uh, they well, they, very aggressive. Yes, it's very, <laughs> very exactly. Very aggressive right? But I, I've seen that in mass, and I'll see how much, you know, he's willing to even give us things to... Um, give us reasons for us to trust them, to do certain things. I even see how my dad would trust my mom and vice versa. So coming from that environment, I didn't really have any... Um, not so good experiences in dating. So bringing that to, into this relationship, the only mindset I had was I am going to trust her from the start. And the more I got to know her, I realized that not only is it easy, but it put me in a place that made me realize that even if I came from a not so great background, she would still give me reasons to build that trust. So um, I'm, I'm grateful I had that experience, but Secure has, it has always been, but I hope it stays that way. Um, but she makes it easier for me too. I will, I will say, thank you. I will say this as well. I think a part of his security, like he said, where he like didn't really have like a jaded past, I think that made such a difference. Tai always jokes that he had a really late glow up, right? And it's true. Same. Same. <laughs> I feel you, bro. After I feel college. You. After college. Same. Me, when I went bored, that's, that's when I <laughs> That's when you started getting that's girls. That's when I started getting girls. <laughs> <laughs> and she loves bored and bearded guys. So no, no, that's, that's a look, though. That's, that's a look. Exact really? Spec. That's why when you saw him that day, <laughs> you were like, yeah, that's, that's really my spec. Like when really? I was on the train the other day in London and I found. Guy hey, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this was before you. This was before you. No, I was looking at him and I was like, why do I find this guy? It looks like your boyfriend. And then I realized he was bored and had a beard. Wait, wait, wait. Is that a thing for you too? Yeah? Is that a thing for you too? No, you have it. Is that a thing for you too? Wait, 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 talk about me. Okay, okay sorry. Sorry. No, I guess, you know, on that topic, funnily enough, actually, do you know why it's a bit different? because I would identify as more like demisexual. So it is very hard for me. Remember I just said Ty was my first adult crush. Mm. It is very hard for me to see someone and be like, oh my God, they're so attractive. I can acknowledge this is an attractive person. Like I can look at them and say, yes, I know that you are attractive. Give me their names. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't necessarily have Attraction. The attraction. Like, it there's can, a difference. Yeah. yeah. The exact same. Yeah. I need to hear what a man says before that is I'm attracted. It. Because they will ruin every fantasy <laughs> you have once they start talking and you hear their yeah, views. That, it, 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 it goes both ways though. Like even like for me, generally speaking, like like I agree with you, someone is attractive, yeah. doesn't mean you're attracted to them. So after you talk to them after a while and you get to know them their interests and like yeah. their values, that's when the attraction actually comes exactly. over time. But I mean, it just doesn't like, hurt that someone is beautiful I didn't see, too. Like just like what Palabi said, um, you know how you said that the attraction and the person's mindset, yeah. like you have that combination. And if you remember, I saw I saw her tweets first. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was so lazy. All I had to do was just Click go to, and look at look up the name. Instead, I was just going based off the small profile picture. So I already loved the type of mindset she had. Yeah. And then the day I went on Instagram and I just typed her name. 
I was it was like, over. Eh? It was over for you. <laughs> wow. No way. It's over I actually for you. cannot imagine being in that My... situation, not knowing what she exactly. looks like, and then seeing our phone on the Listen, <laughs> phone on My, the uh, listen. My honest reaction. I've been told you this. My honest reaction was, no way. This is. <laughs> and then my first reaction was, I didn't know if she was single, so I said, well, listen, whoever is going to be with her, he a lucky guy. <laughs> and then I saw a video. <laughs> you saw a picture of me with my brother and thought I that saw, was my man. Uh, listen, oh. I saw a picture of her and uh, a brother. Like and we literally look like each other. Like Instead of me to just read the caption, I was just scrolling. You're like, already angry at yeah, me. <laughs> kudos to him. And I kept scrolling. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. So it's a real thing. You know, attraction is one thing, you know. People, everyone can find someone that's attractive, right. attractive, but finding that person that has the values you're looking for, that actually has that's the mindset the that's hard attractive part. was always the hard part. And I was never willing to settle for anything less. My friends would call me unicorn because I didn't want to settle and all that, but... It's okay, be a unicorn. Uh, exactly, you <laughs> get what is, you this want. This is what your unicorn way is. You get what you want, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Get what you want, so I'm, I'm glad that happened for me. I'm absolutely loving this conversation, but sadly, we have to wrap it up. So to wrap it up, I'm curious, what was the moment for you guys where you said, you know, I want to build a life with this person? Oh my gosh. There were lots of like nuggets in the beginning. So I remember like first time I spoke to him, I was like, mom, I found my husband. <laughs> Second call, I was like, yeah, this is the one. Like within a week, I was on Twitter like, I found my man. <laughs> so like there were lots of nuggets, but I would say the solid, solid, solid moment I knew that I want to build a life with him. Why are you smiling like no, that? No, 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 wait. Because I'm hearing from first time. Why are you It was, I think it goes back to what I said earlier. Like finding a man who challenges me to be a better person. So for me, it was like the realization that Taiwo isn't just a good man. He's a good human being, man aside, like gender aside, he's a good person. And I think that sadly, there are a lot of women who are in relationships and they're not challenged. They always do the challenging, like they always pushing the guy to be better and be a better partner, a better person. And it doesn't necessarily work the other way. And being with a man who was like, okay, this is who I am. These are my values. This is what I'm about. And feeling like, wow, I need to be a better human being. Like, like in so many ways, like spirituality and his dedication to like Christ. And then also his just willingness to go above and beyond for people and, just how sweet and how loving he is. And it's funny because like, even when he thinks he's being mean to people, I'm like, babe, that's not even, <laughs> like you're still, like he's just such a nice person. And he's like one of the nicest people I've ever met. And that was the moment I think just being like, wow, he makes me want to be even better. Mm. Like, cause he's so good. He's such a good person. And yeah, when I came to that conclusion, it was a wrap for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of words. <laughs> I really am. Um, for me, uh, there were a couple incidents. The first one was after that seven hour call. And like after we said good morning, good night, and I just put my phone down and I was just, I wasn't doing anything. I was just thinking. I was like, why? Why do I have it this good? Why? Why is everything making sense? I called my brother, I said, guy, I don't find wife. I found my <laughs> wife. I told him I found my wife, I'm not playing. But then when I went to London, before I went to London, I told her that if we meet each other and the vibe is not there, let's end it. And we met and it was- The vibe was there. The vibe was vibing. The vibe was vibing. The vibe was vibing. And there was that moment too at the airport where we met and the enthusiasm she had to meet me. Like, I, I'm always the person that's more extrovert, show, the, show themselves. But that moment, the airport, is something that could ever, we're gonna have a lot of great moments in life, but that's one that, that will always stand out. And was then, that the one where you set your phone? Did we did we get to see that? No, no, that, that was like a different trip. Yeah. That was the okay. first time we ever met. Like, okay. I saw him coming and I was just like, instinct. Even though I've never met him in real life physically, I just ran over to him. Gave him a big flying hug, because I was just like, this, the, is, you, this is my right. person, yeah. you know? But then the main, the third one was when she came to Houston last year to visit. And I think she stayed for almost a month. Yeah, it was here And for in a month. that month, like there were days where I forgot that 
oh, we have not even been dating for a year yet, but it felt like this is what I can get used to forever. And in that moment, from just daily stuff, like the, her willingness to go above and beyond for me, my willingness to do that for her, and to see somebody reciprocate that energy without being asked, I said, what am I, what am I doing? This, this is it. So those are, those are moments that really made me say, this is my person, and without a doubt, I have no doubts. Like, you know how sometimes people post their relationships online and people assume that they're just happy on that scene? Um, it, it's a pain hits us to know that it's, <laughs> it's pain we're it's happier. Yeah, it's we are happier. It's, it's, it's better in real life. We are, <laughs> we are happy off camera, and yes, I don't know how to express that even more. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy I'm in this relationship, and um, I told her that I can't see any other way this would go. There was a time when I was in London on Valentine's Day, the first year, and we're at Park Row for dinner. And she, we, and we're like, how many days in? We're like so a month in? We were a month in, and this was the first, this was the first week we first met week each of other physically. Person. And then she asked me a question. She said, hypothetically, what if this doesn't work out? And I almost shed a tear just hearing it, because I could not even picture a scenario where this doesn't work. She's the same me. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't even picture a scenario where this doesn't work. And that moment I said, yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. it. This and is I can't it. lie, that it. moment was like a, a, not that things shifted, because I was always where I was, right? But it was like a snap, mm. because like to see him get so emotional, we'd been in each other's presence for like six days and it'd been a month of like talking. I asked him, oh, what, what would you do if, hypothetically? I was just thinking like, because I joked, I was like, oh me, this I'll is it for me. If, yeah, I, yeah. No, I said, if this doesn't work out, I'm joining another, I give up with love and <laughs> relationships, I'm done. And I was just like doing it in passing, right? And then when he got super emotional, I was like, he loved me. <laughs> no, he, he told me he loved me already. But I'm like, you really love me. The fact that he was sad about yeah. that. Yeah, and then when I was like looking at him, and it's funny because he was like, it's the champagne, it's the champagne. <laughs> I did, I did. I did, I did, I did yeah. say that, I did say that. I did and I was like, I was like, I but it, it really touched me because yeah. I was like, to be loved so deeply, to have not known someone for, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> it, was, it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's Fasaya rubbing off on me. I see your eyes tearing up. I saw, yeah. eyes, I saw her eyes tearing up. I said, I saw her eyes tearing up. Yeah. So um, it, it, but yeah, it was just like, it was just like, just to know that you are loved so deeply was like, wow, this is nice. Especially like in a romantic way, because I'm loved deeply by my family and like my friends. But I was like, wow, this is someone who like loves me just as much as I love them, you know? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I have to like recollect myself. Should I go first? Yes, please. Okay. There was not one moment for me and I knew from quite early on. We met at a time where I had a few like difficult relationships, important relationships in my life that were difficult. And I felt like with running a business and everything, I really felt like in terms of the hard day-to-day -day work and effort and I was just doing a lot. I was struggling, right? And then I also feel like as a first daughter, I became a nurturer very quickly and I had to handle a lot. And I always say, because when we met, I didn't want kids. I always say that I want to be the kid. Like I don't, I don't want to take care of anyone because I want to be taken care of. When we met, you didn't want kids. L <laughs> Wait, just you heard it here first. <laughs> Wait, you didn't know this? Well, she mentioned it, but the fact that she's saying it out loud now with her chest is like... Okay, forget that. Okay, forget it, forgot it, forgot it, forgot it. Um, <laughs> but then we met and I felt so taken care of. And acts of service is my love language. So like, I'm struggling with something. I don't have an answer. Struggling with a team member. Struggling with budget. And he's like send me the Excel spreadsheets and he'll do the thing. Or, you know, okay, what are you struggling with? What did the person say? What did you say? Don't ha get this in writing. I was just being nurtured. I was being taken care of and I felt childlike for the first time in a long time. 
And that was, like, I just knew, I was, I was just like, if this, if I can be taken care of like this, yeah. this is what I need more than anything else. So it was the way that I was just being nurtured. Now it sounds like I need a dad. But <laughs> I get that. No. I even did a, a, a video yeah. about that. Like firstborn daughters. Yeah. Like mm. the relationships like we really need are people that pour into us because we spend so much of our life pouring into other people. And obviously you pour into them too, but they pour into you in a way you don't feel like you're being depleted. You feel you still feel fulfilled. So I get it. It's not that you're looking like for a dad, but you're looking for someone who reciprocates and even goes above and beyond more than you even do and does it naturally in a way that they're not resentful about it. They're not doing it because they've got like ill intent. They're doing it because that's just who they are. So I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Oh, so sweet. Your turn. <laughs> no pressure. Um, similar to you, I don't think there's been like one defining moment. Um, I think for me, it's, I hadn't really found anyone, she might not believe this, but like there are lots of values that she has that I pick at, but I actually really appreciate because it shows me that she can think for herself, right? And that's super attractive to me because I kind of feel that way about myself. So to like see someone who is on the same page as you makes me like really, really happy. Um, there have also been times that I know I'm not like, I'm not in the best place in life. It could be financially, it could be emotionally, whatever the case may be, but she's always been there to like, to take care of me. And I know she's saying, she's saying, oh, I do all the nurturing, but I don't think she realizes how much, even being able to call her and just tell her what's going on in my life and her being there to support me has just really like helped me out so much in life. And yeah, I think there's only gonna be more things to like reaffirm and reassure like me in terms of my wanting to spend the rest of my life with you. Um, Maddie. Maddie, I got you, I got you. See how to hold us to this one. She's, she's trying to stop herself up crying. That's what to think. She's trying to do something. That's what you are. That's what you are. That's what you are. It's okay. Wow. Just let the tears down. It's okay. Wow. But yeah, no, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, lot of, a lot of things. And I've been in relationships in the past that have been good relationships. They haven't been terrible. But the nurture and the care and the attention to detail, like, for her towards my life, it just takes everything to the next level. And yeah. I love that. I still think that we're gonna have a big wedding. Amen. Are we're you... getting married? Oh. Why oh. is it? Why is it always that you want a big wedding? Well, I don't want a big it's wedding because it's, it's yeah, gonna you, be a lot of, it, there's a lot of financial responsibility associated yeah. with that. So I really want a tiny wedding. Oh, okay. But I don't think I can get away with doing a small <laughs> wedding. And she thinks the same. But I told her to write her list and she'll just be naming all these people and by the time we get to 70, 80, <laughs> that's just her. Mm -hmm. She'll learn too. Exactly, worry. that's She's what worried. I'm saying. It's, it it's nice, it's a nice thought to have a small this way. 50, it's this necessary. <laughs> we'll see. We've come yeah. a long way because in the beginning of our relationship, we were not going to get married. Not, yeah. I knew that I did not want to be married. But really? We still don't have to yeah, get married. We don't have way. to. Wow. We don't have to. This 50 person wedding, you keep imagining. It's it will happen. It will happen <laughs> times four. I'm, times I'm four. meaner than him. The thing is, he's so sweet and loving. And it's like, yeah. oh, you can come, you can come. He's you, the kind of person. You say the no. Yes, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I don't care. I don't okay. know this person. My body might never know. Even if you're blood related, have you called me this year? Cross. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, when the time comes. <laughs>